Today we have a very special episode. Mark Zonder is a beast on the drums. But what are his skills in the kitchen? When we got to the end of this episode, we still didn't know. So there, are we rolling or no? I want to taste Share? Well, I want to taste what the hell that's all about if it costs $16 million. Freaking so wait, so wait a minute. But we heard many of his stories and enjoyed his chill, down-to-earth attitude. The, 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 Jewish, the Jewish guy's not bitching about money, but you guys are? Yeah, yeah. well, come on. You know. We got a real sense of his passion for music, love for his family, and his overall approach to life. Hail metalheads and masticators. I'm Brett Hogue, your host, welcoming you once again to another episode of Metal Mastication. I'm here to remind you that you cannot spell crap without rap. Today we have a very special episode. We have, Not only do we have Billy Sheen once again going to text in, I believe they're in Ecuador right now, Mr. Big Tour, and uh, in person in the fabulous kitchen of our associate producer James Pulley here, we have Mark Zonder, the drum god from Warlord and Fate's Warning, known as Thunder Child. Let's bring him out right now, Mr. Mark Zonder, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is something that I kind of grew up with, and it was the birthday uh, meal that I got to pick. It's corned beef on rye, but the trick of it was my mom had this really nasty fryer that we'd never changed the oil in <laughs> and that's where the taste came from so a lot of this stuff was store-bought and then kind of prepped up you know like we're doing here steaming the corned beef you know that kind of stuff but we kind of actually preferred that because we didn't need my mom doing any kind of experiments right. you know like <laughs> peanuts and coleslaw it's like what you have for dinner most nights growing up then you had three boys three boys in the family yeah right? we, we used to joke yeah my brother two years older brother a year younger we used to joke that my mom would put out five hot dogs because she wanted to toughen one of us up and we'd have to fight for it. <laughs> a big thing in our house was the classic uh, kosher dried salami. Oh, yeah. You yeah, fry yeah. that up and yeah. put that on rye bread, right, that'll get you right. every time. Yeah, my wife cooks extremely healthy, mm, which mm. I'm not a giant fan of all the time. And I know you work out a lot at the gym with the weights, you know, kind of thing, at home with and the weights. You play every day too, don't you? Play every day and cycling is a big thing too. Um, I wanted to ask you about your joints. Uh, are you taking like glucosamine? Oh, those or? joints. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> not that, uh, not those. We'll talk I didn't about know we went later. back to 1979. Yeah, okay. We have some. It's California. <laughs> it's legal now. Uh, so. I have a meniscus problem. Um, I get those shots every once in a while, the gel shots. Amazing. Um, when it comes to the drum thing, because I know a lot of guys have problems with this and that and the other. I was fortunate enough to be taught right. You know, I took my first lessons when I was seven. And well, now you're jumping ahead of the interview, oh. man. What the hell? Okay, well, you asked about my uh, joints. Uh, man! So, what I don't the know. hell? Well, why don't you take a break? Okay. I got it. <laughs> Believe it or not, my first drums le lessons um, were the guy named Forrest Elledge. He was the drummer on the Merv Griffin show, Mike Douglas. Oh, one of those. Really? So the funny part of it, it was all jazz. Because yeah, because you got to yeah, remember yeah, it, it's right, jazz. Yeah. There it's ain't ja no rock right, going yeah. on back then. Well, there was well, rock, but yeah, but no, he's jazz. So picture this: seven, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon. I get on my little bike with my little peachy folder, and my drumsticks, and I go down to the music store. This guy's just waking up. Seriously, the big floppy mustache, the kind of long hair for the time, the the vest with the silk shirt that's open, cup of coffee in the styrofoam cup here. Cigarette, cigarette, yeah, cigarette, gotta have a cigarette, yeah. And we sit down. There's one bass drum. Everybody gets a, and these are all like little, like this isn't a monster kit. Right. Everybody gets a rack tom. And the first things that I learned after we got, I mean, I was on a practice pad for years and on a snare drum. But when we got to it, we were doing first songs I ever learned were Proud Mary, Eleanor Rigby, and Let It Be. But they were all the Aretha Franklin live versions oh. and they were charted out it was it wasn't tina I turner see, yeah. it wasn't creedence so you, you weren't learning ringo no 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 this was jazz this okay. was and, and they weren't in jazz ways but they were just with those kind of drummers and i think that's a lot of kind of what shaped me instead of being i mean i'm the i never went through basic rock phil's book i never went through that kind of thing as much as i had so much jazz i mean i can't play jazz to save my life now but that's what it was all about back then. I think it, it, what it did, though, more than anything else, the technique that I was taught. I mean, <laughs> wherever wood is, let's knock on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I, don't, I can wake up certain days, and I've had it where my back is killing me. 
I sit down on that drum throne, I'm fine. I get on the bike, I'm fine. But to walk, I yeah, can't walk. Really? It's the strangest thing. Strangest huh. thing. But I've been lucky. I you know play every day. I think it's a good way to do it. Um, and, but I've just taught the right way. And it's not that I put a conscious effort into it. It's just I was taught that way. I mean, I remember being, you know, in third grade, standing up in front of the whole class, that's when they had music lessons in right. schools. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had to play my five stroke role, my seven stroke role. Never forget the teacher's name was Mr. Taxi. He had the tortoiseshell glass. He had the patches on the sleeves. <laughs> yeah, right. And he'd stand, yeah. stand over me, and I'd have to play the five stroke, the seven stroke. Now, you say you can't play jazz to save your life, but I have to beg to differ. Because when we did a sit down interview, which you need to read if you haven't, it's at heartofhollywoodmagazine.com. Did a sit down interview uh, with Mark and Giles Lavery for the upcoming Warlord, which has just been released. And we'll get into that in a minute. I was actually the first person to hear that song, I have to say. Yes, you were. Uh, even before the singer. Okay, so that was really cool. Yeah. Um, and I asked you at that interview how your shuffle was. So I'm going to ask you again, how's your shuffle? Shuffle and jazz are two different things. Oh, now. but you're telling me, but isn't there a lot of shuffle in jazz? When I think of jazz, I think of that heavy right hand <clears throat> on the ride cymbal. I think of Buddy Rich. Okay. You know, I think of Steve Smith, you know, that ching, 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 that, that whole thing. Okay. You know, All Tommy right. Igo, those guys that are just like tear that stuff up. The shovel was more of a, you know, take Rosanna, because that's where I came in. You know, Bonham, yes, and Bernard Purdy, and, it, and they stole it from Keltner, and it goes back and back. But what I did was, and since I was taught the right way, I can read. So I had drum lessons, and they broke down Rosanna. So I saw, you know, oh, I learned it. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. funny story is, there's, I remember, you know, at my studio, there's a drummer in there. And he says, oh, I don't need to learn how to read. I'm, I'm good. And I go, well, okay, well, let me, let, can you play Rosanna? Can you play the shuffle? Can you play that? He couldn't. And I said, how would you, and he goes, well, I need time. I go, no, because even if you sat down with the record, you could never figure out the way those notes are going together that quickly. Now, if you could read... Then it's, then it's simple. But what I did is I took that shuffle and I just ripped it off like I've ripped off a million other things. Um, played it in seven, okay? With the hi-hat playing one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, you know, and, and it's on the downbeat. Um, I moved my hands around. I made fills out of it. I used to do it in my clinic all the time, how you can take the most, sim not simple, but take one idea and just go, you know? Um, and, and for a lot of young drummers, not that this is a modern drummer interview, but, but no, but yeah, but, no, yeah. But, but the, the the real truth is, the more you play, the more you practice, you, there's you realize how there's just so much more, and it's never ending. Because all you have to do is move your right hand over here, move, play the same pattern, move your left hand. Again, in my clinic, I used to do a thing where I'd play "Living After Midnight" by Priest. Hi hats just playing one, two, three, and four, banging on the bell, basic rock beat. The minute I turn that hi hat to the off beat. It all of a sudden sounds like Gloria Stefan or something mm. because there's that mm, mm, yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of thing yeah, going yeah. on. So yeah. it's endless. That's and that's so cool. the thing. That's the thing is when you're younger, especially the drums, oh my God, um, you're not playing songs. You're on a freaking pack. I was on a practice pad until I was 12 or 11. I mean, it's, it's so hard compared to your friends over here going, kumbaya. You know, like yeah, yeah, one yeah, lesson, the right. dude's like got the right, chicks yeah. lined up. Right. You know? <laughs> right. But it, it, once you get to that point and it opens up, it's just endless. It's completely endless of what you can do. Watch part two of three. Mark talks about Warlord, Bill Samus, and playing music.